Well, welcome everybody to Dino Park Media. My name is Samuel and I am the creator of Dino Park Media. But with me today, um, I have Marino Dares and he is the, um, he is a film, uh, huge into filmography. He's actually uh, directed his own uh, Star Wars fan film that will be coming out soon, um, as well as he's been a part of other projects with Star Wars fan films. And he's also the animator for Star Wars, uh, for Star Wars theories, Once Upon a Theory on YouTube. And so, uh, Marino, I'm really happy to have you with me today. And uh, yeah, why don't you just go ahead and say hi. Hello there. I'm so happy to be here. Awesome, awesome, awesome. And um, so, Marino, um, we're, today we're talking about the Camp Cretaceous video, uh, the Camp Cretaceous trailer that came out, um, uh, well, a week after, uh, a, a week before, excuse me, a week before this video actually got recorded. And so we wanted to just quickly break down the Camp Cretaceous trailer. And starting off, I wanted, I wanted to actually start, Marino, with your expertise, um, uh, which is animation and filmography. But um, specifically based upon with animation, uh, there's like, there, this is kind of an interesting style. Right with with with, with uh, Camp Cretaceous. Like, um, what what's what's your opinion on what we can see with the animation style so far? Uh, well, I've never worked with uh, 3D animation. I've always done 2D animation by now, but I think that everyone can notice that there is some kind of style gap between the human characters and the dinosaurs and the environments, the mountains, the trees, uh, the water. Everything looks super realistic, almost live action, but the, but the um, human characters look like m more cartoonish. And I think that there is an interesting decision behind this gap, because it's something that uh, has uh, shocked a lot of people, but I want to see what are they trying to do with it. Yeah, like, I'm not an animator, you know, I'm, I, I, so I, I'm not any sort of expert on this situation, but I definitely see what you're talking about, though, when it comes to the huge gap of, of, of style between the characters, the, like the actual human models and the dinosaur models. Um, I think I was uh, messaging you before saying, like, um, it, it almost looks like, the, like uh, they, they just ported the dino models over from Jurassic World, you know, and then they're just like, oh, snap, we forgot the humans, and they just kind of <laughs> threw them in there. Yeah, it, it seems like they for sure reused lots of uh, assets that they've already had. And it's like the textures of the dinosaurs are a little bit softer and the eyes are a little more... are bigger. But in terms of movement of the, animate, of the animation, uh, animation itself, um, the dinosaurs have a really realistic animations and the humans have some kind of really like squared animation. It's not really fluid. It's like you can see the uh, forces uh, on the... Um, you can see the, for the forces uh, interacting between them. They are like really fast and really direct and it's not a really soft animation, I think. But that also made me think that the first uh, season of The Clone Wars uh, was like that. The first uh, animation that we saw in The Clone Wars was uh, really uh, like static, um, but um, the last season, uh, season seven, looks like a movie. So I think that if uh, Camp Cretaceous evolves, it will get uh, better animation and textures and, and everything for the human characters. If that's what they want. Yeah, I, I agree. And, and that was such a, that, that, I, didn't, I never thought of that, but that's a really good likening. Because Clone Wars season one, um, it just it just felt super cartoony. The uh, the characters are very rigid, you know. Like it, it, you can tell that um, like uh, there wasn't very much funding behind that first season. Um, but then yeah, compare season one to season seven of Clone Wars, and like 
just how fluid the, the, the motions are and um, not to go into spoilers, but like, yeah, the camera work and then not to go into too many spoilers, but even the motion capture for one of the fight scenes, like the, like that, it, it like, which is probably one of the greatest lightsaber, uh, lightsaber fights in all of Star Wars, but you know, that's a separate point, of course. But um, yeah, no, I completely agree. I, I hope that Camp Cretaceous can continue to evolve, like you said, um, with its animation style. If they go for a second season, um, I think that will really depend on the first one. Which I think that that actually leads us into the next point pretty well. Um, so uh, when we when we when we watch the trailer, we see a lot of different points coming up here like the beginning um people are walking uh, or not walking they're they're driving into the camp um in the, in the back of that mercedes truck thing you know and um you see like these 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 teenagers it seems like going like isn't this super cool and all that kind of stuff and um but then of course you know uh i think uh uh, Ian Malcolm's character from The Lost World says it best, you know, ah, it's all, ooh, ah, and then later it's running and screaming, you know, and like, the, you see the, you see the transition uh, of that happening in the trailer, because then the trailer all of a sudden goes to different hit points of the Indominus breaking out, and uh, so you have the Indominus breaking out, you also have the aspect of, um, of uh, the Carnotaurus chase, and I think that's kind of important for me specifically. We'll get more into that in a sec. But then also, the Mosasaurus even makes an appearance in this trailer, and I I like it. I I, I like the uh, the uh, situations of peril. But um, yeah, what what are your takes on what we can see in the story so far? Um, I really like the feeling that it's happening at the same time uh, as um, the first Jurassic World. I really like that. Yeah, and. It's also similar to, spoiler alert, the last season of The Clone Wars that it's happening at the same time as Rowans of the Sith. I like that we will be able to see some things here and there that will relate di directly to what we saw in the movie. And I'm really expecting to see those things and see how they manage to create another different completely different story with the same elements in the same island at the same time. And I like, I like how you bring up the island because um, one of the biggest complaints that a lot of current Jurassic fans have, it seems like, is everything continues to go back to the island. Um, or an island, you know? Um, so the first three movies, it either was on... So Jurassic Park or Dress the Lost World Jurassic Park Jurassic Park Three, it was either on Nublar or Sorna, and then um, and of, of, we had a little bit of San Francisco in the Lost World, but um, it, it it mostly centered around the islands, and then um, then Jurassic World we're back to the island, and then Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom it starts on the island, <laughs> so a lot of people are tired of the island. I particularly like the islands. I like the tropic feel but then again also you can do that in other places um but i'm really excited to see more of nublar especially the different areas of nublar specifically like the area of camp cramp eh, cramp excuse me camp cretaceous yeah cramper but like uh specifically camp cretaceous like they, ha they have their own like home base or campground area with like the different tree houses that looks really interesting to me and i'm excited to learn more about that and learn more about different areas of the island, and namely, the Carnotaurus. The Carnotaurus apparently is supposed to be a big deal in this show, and um, even though it's not revealed in the trailer, um, different toys and uh, different um, promotional material have actually named the Carnotaurus Toro. So that, so apparently that's his name, but uh, like apparently he even has like some characterization, he's got a scar on the right side of his face, and um, like I'm excited to see a new dinosaur take the 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 main antagonist spot because I, I think that the Indominus will be a big factor, but I think that the Carnotaurus is going to be the thing that's kind of like hunting the uh, the kids at Camp Cretaceous. What about what about you? Yeah, because we already know what happens to the Indominus Rex, so I think that it will make a lot of sense to have some kind of new bad guy. And the Carnotaurus is a really cool dinosaur, and we 
saw it for the first time in that animated movie Dinosaur and it works really well as the main villain dinosaur. Right. Right. It, it really does. Um, and uh, I, I'm wondering if they're going to be doing some more with the Carnotaurus too, um, because in, in the original book, The Lost World, rather than the movie, but The Lost World Jurassic Park, the book by Michael Crichton, um, the Carnotaurus was actually supposed to camouflage. And we see in the trailer the the Parasaur the Parasaur Lophus, um, the, the the little herd of Parasaur Lophuses, they actually are luminescent, and so that's evidence of uh, bioengineering, you know, kind of like twerk, uh, like tweaking. I, I almost said a different word, uh, like tweaking a little bit with um, the DNA in order to make it something that would be entertaining to look at, which is you know l like luminescent Parasaurs. So. Um, I'm wondering if they're going to be making that a part of the Carnotaurus, because camouflage is also technically already a part of um, Jurassic World uh, canon, and not just in the book, but it ha like the, the Indominus Rex was able to camouflage. Yeah. Um, well, um, one thing that I liked and disliked at the same time about uh, Jurassic World is that the the character of Claire starts uh, saying that the audience or, or the people going to the park want something more spectacular, want something with more teeth. And I feel like this is what the producers are actually saying, that they want more spectacle. And it's like they are talking about themselves uh, but they are projecting themselves into these characters and I like this because it's really human and I dislike it, dislike it at the same time and also I think that it's very interesting the tweaked Dinia thing because um, if some new scientific discovery is made, like the feather thing, or like the lips on the T-Rex, or uh, the Spinosaurus thing, if all those, if all these things happen, they don't have to immediately upgrade their 3D models because they are not original dinosaurs. So. It's okay if they add fancy things like uh, something bioluminescent or the uh, Dilophosaurus with the big thing around the neck, you know, all, all these little inventions, no? I'm okay with that, yeah. Yeah, I, I, I hope that they can make interesting plot points to it, for, uh, more interesting plot points for it as well, because um, I think that the Indominus Rex having its um, having its, uh, you know, DNA tweaked in um, 2015's Jurassic World, those were used mainly for plot devices, you know, in order to help the plot move forward, you know, the camouflage thing, like um, the, the ability to uh, cha uh, change its thermal radiation, uh, right, uh, th uh, th thermal uh, radiation, you know, so that it wouldn't be detected by scanners and stuff like that. So, like, um, I think that that was just kind of like to help the, the Indominus Rex get out and you know do stuff but I want to see it like create certain certain scenarios that would never ever happen unless the tweak happened unless the DNA was tweaked if, if that makes sense so like the Carnotaurus camouflaging so like it's just like sitting there and like nobody knows it's there until it, it just jumps out and attacks and like has a jump scare I think that would be super super cool <laughs> yeah that would be really really cool yes but I, I mean it seems like a really big field of options for what you just said. I, I can't land on any specific idea right now, but it seems really interesting. Yes. I, yeah, I, I hope that they can use um, bioengineering and, and uh, tweaking of the, of the DNA for specific scenarios rather than just, yep, this is how they got out, you know? So like, I think that would be really cool. But, um, but finally, I, I, I want to move into what what are your, what are your personal expectations from this? Like, I've got personal expectations for for the show, and I'll be willing to share them here in a little bit. But, like, what are you hoping that this show will accomplish for you specifically? And then, what do you think it's going to do for Jurassic World and the, and the Jurassic franchise moving forward? 
Well, for me specifically, specifically, I want to learn more about the about the lore. I want to know what you said more parts about the island. I want to know more characteristics of the dinosaurs. I want to know more little things, more details, more uh, more details to this uh, universe, to this island, and. For the franchise, uh, I think it's going to be like some kind of way of presenting the series to the younger ones. And I also like that the protagonists are kids because I think that they will feel more identified with them and if I was a kid I would really like to go to this camp and by the way I really like that they called it Camp Cretaceous because they are finally using the word Cretaceous because Jurassic always sounds cooler Triassic maybe but Cretaceous is difficult but Camp Cretaceous it sounds good Mm, yes, it does. Yeah. I completely agree. <laughs> that's, a, that's a good point. You know, I, I mean, it, it just rolls off the tongue. Hmm. Alliteration. But, um, I mean, I completely agree with you um, about the idea of wanting to learn more about the lore. Hmm. Um, and, and, and so, like, um, I'm hoping that they can do some really cool things specifically with, um, like, uh, I'm, I'm hoping that they can at least bring other characters in. Um, like maybe they, they might not have like Claire Deering or they might not have um, Owen Grady. I mean, those are like big, big name actors that I don't think you're yeah. going to pay in order to bring into your show. Um, but maybe Dr. Wu, you know, maybe like if maybe they could swing um, uh, 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 Henry Wu. But um, also like other like like minor characters that help flesh out the, the world. Because um, as, as, as interesting as it is to tell the grander story uh, and to tell stories that happen outside of the main movies, it's also good to have things that like that tie back to the originals, like which is what I think um, the new Star Wars sequels, you know, just to pick on them, I think that's one of the big reasons that they didn't succeed is because they, they really tried like cutting off and like, I mean, there's no better point than just, you know, quoting Kylo Ren from episode 8. Uh, kill, uh, let the past die. Kill it if you have to. Like, I mean, they literally were trying to just, like, destroy the rest of the Star Wars uh, universe in order to do with whatever they wanted. And you can't do that. Absolutely agree on that. Yeah. yeah. And you can't do that. Yeah, I think that's one of the reasons why everybody loves Rogue One. Because it's a great story that it's a little story of the overall saga. It's something very small that happens before A New Hope, but it's a really, a really good story. And that's what we, the fans, and I think that even not the fans want to see, that really good stories that are around the Skywalker storyline, but other characters and something like The Mandalorian but the Mandalorian is like a little bit far away from the uh, from the um, basic uh, Star Wars timeline. But yeah, something like Rogue One, and that's why I really like that Camp Cretaceous. It's ha it's happening at the same time that um, yeah, uh, Jurassic World because it's also a, r a little bit hard to believe that the Indominus Rex escaped two times. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay, so you, you, you just messed up the first time and you're like, oh that's okay, we'll just try it again. <laughs> yeah, I highly doubt that. That's a good point to make. But yeah, I'm hoping that we can move forward um and, and, like uh, with the story and I hope that they can masterfully intertwine the story with Jurassic World like they did with um the last season of Clone Wars. I mean uh, they they I mean, yeah, spoiler alert, if you haven't seen it, if you haven't seen it then what are you doing? Go watch you know, go get a free trial of Disney Plus. To watch season seven. It's it's amazing. But um, when it comes to the Clone Wars, it just it, it it's so perfectly 
intertwines with episode three, and I'm hoping that Camp Cretaceous can ex can can do the same thing. Um, but uh, just knowing how like kid centric this show is, I have I have some apprehension, but you know, I, I'm I'm willing to be I'm willing to be surprised. And um, and then finally, what I'm hoping that this do this does for the Jurassic franchise, I'm hoping that this will open up um, a new market for extra material. Because right, because so far all we've had um, are the Jurassic movies, Jurassic Parks one through three, and then Jurassic World one, two, and then next year D Dominion we're gonna have Jurassic World three. And so far all we've had are the movies. Last year they introduced a short film, and it did very well. And but that was that was like kind of like a flash in the pan. It, it was just you know something that they put out on YouTube. It wasn't something that like it wasn't as dedicated of a story like a TV show. And I'm hoping that Camp Cretaceous can open up the need, or at least the, the want, for more shows, and then hopefully leading to more, like, um, more teen, PG-13 rated, you know, like, shows that can really, really get some more uh, heart-pumping action in there. I, that's what I'm really hoping for. Yeah, that, that will be great, like, new shows that can add more elements to the, to the saga we already know, yeah. Absolutely. Well, Marino, that's uh, all the time that we have for today, but thank you so much uh, for joining me um, and uh, talking about the trailer with me. This has been a huge treat um, to be able to uh, to do a video with you and to be able to hear your opinions on the trailer. Uh, th thank you for inviting me. Yeah. Well, thank you, sir. And uh, guys, uh, make sure to uh, comment on this video what you what you really enjoy about uh, the, enjoyed about the Camp Cretaceous trailer, and then also uh, like this video and subscribe if you want to see more content about Jurassic anything and dinosaurs. But guys, know you are loved, and I'll see you later.